Welcome to section 4.6. Okay, gentle people, in the last lecture, what I talked about was a metathesis reaction. And what I did is I told you the two ionic compounds that I was giving you, and I told you the products. Now, that's not going to always be the case. Sometimes what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you just the reactants and you have to describe if a metathesis is going to occur and you're going to do that by predicting the possible products that could form during the course of the reaction. So the way that you're going to do this is you're going to follow a couple of steps and by following these steps you can go ahead and build the metathesis reaction. So the first thing you're going to do is you are going to do that transposition or the double replacement. I'm going to switch partners. Now, the one thing you're going to have to remember is that when you make the possible products, you got to make an ionic formula that is going to be charge neutral. So this is the one time you're going to change subscripts because you are predicting products. I haven't told you what the products are, so now you're allowed to change subscripts. So let's look at this metathesis reaction. I'm going to give you the two ionic compounds, potassium iodide and lead nitrate. So the first thing we want to know is what ions I'm dealing with. So in this case, I have K plus and I minus. For the lead nitrate, I have lead two plus and each of these nitrates is one minus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap partners. The potassium is going to go with the nitrate. Now what you'll notice is potassium is one plus, nitrate is one minus. So if I were to swap partners, they come together in a one to one ratio. So KNO3. Now if I wanted to do the other product, well, I would look at lead and I would bring it together with iodide. But in this case, my charge of my lead is two plus and iodide is one minus. So I'm gonna need two iodides per lead. Or in other words, to have a neutral ionic complex, I have to be PBI2. Now the next thing you wanna do is you wanna look at your solubility rules. You wanna examine each of the products you possibly could have and you're going to see if that possible product is soluble or not. So in this case, let's look at KNO3 and PBI2. So for KNO3, we have the nitrate ion. And so you guys should remember from the last lecture, all nitrates are soluble. So this is going to be a soluble compound. So I'm going to mark it as AQ or aqueous. The other product I had was lead to iodide. So we're gonna look up our anion, iodide, and what we see is that most are soluble. However, what we see is that PBI2 is considered slightly soluble. So a rule of thumb here, if something is slightly soluble or insoluble, I want you to mark this as solid. So in this case, PBI2 is going to be a solid complex. So for my reactions, aqueous and solid. Now, if all my products are soluble, then I'm going to write no reaction. And the reason why I write no reaction, for a metathesis reaction to occur, I have to remove ions from solution. And to remove ions from solution, I have to make a solid, I have to form a gas, or I have to make a non-electrolyte. And if I don't do any one of these, a metathesis doesn't occur. So if everything is aqueous, that means everything is ions, and I haven't removed ions from solution. So once we've established all the states of our products, we do the last thing, and we do this with every reaction, and that is to balance the equation. So in this case, what we have are two iodides. So I'm going to put a two in front of my potassium iodides, and then I'm going to put a two in front of my KNO3. Now, if you look at the nitrates, we have the appropriate number of nitrates on both sides, two nitrates. And what you'll notice is that we have one lead on each side. And so now we're a fully balanced equation. Now, speaking of fully balanced equation, what I showed you in the previous slide was what we call the molecular equation. 
the molecular equation, just like the name says, is I want to go ahead and have molecules. So for example, I can tell you the reaction of magnesium nitrate with NaOH going to magnesium hydroxide and sodium nitrate. Now we can write this reaction a little bit more explicitly because remember what I told you guys, this does not exist in solution. If you have an ionic compound and you have aqueous by it, well, what really happens in solution is those two ions are not stuck together. The ionic compound breaks up, if it's soluble, into the two ions. So really, when I have MgNO3 aqueous, what this really means is that I have Mg2 plus ions that are aqueous plus NO3 ions that are aqueous as well. So what we can write is what's called the complete ionic equation. For the complete ionic equation, I do not want to write empirical formulas. I want to state what is really in solution. I want to write the ions out. So what happens is my magnesium nitrate turns into magnesium two plus ions and two things of the nitrate ion. In this molecular equation, you guys saw that I had two NaOHs. Well, again, this is aqueous. And what that means is it's going to generate two sodium ions that are aqueous and two hydroxide ions that are aqueous. Now, on the product side, what I have is magnesium hydroxide that is solid. Note, this is a solid. Remember, solids are not breaking up into solution. They do not dissociate. The ions are stuck together. So for my complete ionic equation, I'm going to keep that intact, and I am not going to break them up into the ions, and I'm going to keep that solid physical state as a descriptor. And the last thing you'll see on our product side is my sodium nitrate. Again, it is aqueous, so it's going to form two sodium ions because there's two sodium nitrates. And again, it's going to form two nitrate ions that are aqueous. So this right here is my complete ionic equation. Now, what you'll notice here is some of my text is a different color. If you look at my complete ionic equation, what you'll notice is I've left some things in black. And the reason I left these in black is you'll see that these two reactants appear exactly the same on my product side. I have two sodium ions on either side, and I have two nitrates on either side. So what this is telling you is that these ions don't change during the course of the reaction. They are not reacting. They are just watching the reaction take place. And they are not participating in the reaction itself. So what we call these are spectator ions. These ions appear identically on both sides of the equation. Now, what I can do is I can remember that this arrow is an equal sign. And if I have something on both sides of the equation that appear exactly the same, and keyword exactly the same, I can go ahead and eliminate them from both sides of the equation. Just like you add 5 to the left-hand side of an equation and 5 to the right hand of a mathematical equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my spectator ions. Now, if I remove my spectator ions, all I'm left with is what's called the net ionic equation. The net ionic equation gets us to the heart of our reaction. It is telling you what is actually reacting. In this case, my magnesium 2 plus ions are reacting with two hydroxide ions to form MgOH2. Now, I want you to note this is why we have the metathesis reaction. You'll note at the start of my reaction, I have magnesium ions and hydroxide ions, and they are equated ions floating around in solution. However, at the end of my reaction, I'm going to remove these two ions and I'm going to form a solid species.
So because I remove ions from solution, that is why this is a metathesis reaction. They are no longer ions, they are incorporated into the solid crystal structure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and practice this out. Why don't you do me a favor and take a look at these two equations and write down what the net ionic equation is going to be for each one of these. Now remember, you guys can use the solubility rules to determine solid products, and hopefully that will help you guys out. When you guys are done, mark the right answer. All right, gentle people, let's go ahead and tackle this out. So the first thing I like to do is I like to write down the molecular equation. So I'm going to have KOH, and I'm going to add that to cobalt nitrate. Now we've done a whole bunch of nitrates already as part of our lectures. And what you guys should remember is that nitrates are all soluble. So I know this is going to be aqueous right off at the start. So let's take a look at KOH. So if we look at potassium hydroxide, we look at the hydroxide ion. So hydroxide's right here. And what it says is that the group one elements and barium hydroxide are soluble. You'll notice that potassium is in the first column, so it is in group one, and so this it is an aqueous entity. So I'm gonna put a Q right here, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write my yields arrow, and I'm gonna go ahead and swap my partners. So the first thing that I have is I have my potassium, and it's gonna combine with the anion of my second compound, which happens to be NO3 minus. Now remember, potassium is a positive charge, NO3 minus is a minus charge, so this is gonna come together in a one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm gonna write KNO3. Now my second product, here I have cobalt, and it's in the two plus state, and I know that because there's two nitrates attached to it. And each of those nitrates are minus one. So this is gonna combine with the anion of my first compound. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine it with OH minus. Now remember, OH minus, CO2 plus, so this has to come together in a one to two ratio. I have to make neutral ionic compound. So CO, OH, two. So the next thing is, is I got to check the solubility of this cobalt hydroxide. So cobalt hydroxide, if I look at the hydroxides again, group one and barium hydroxide are soluble. And then I have strontium and calcium, and these are slightly soluble. But then I go to the end, and I realize most hydroxides are insoluble. So that means this is going to form a solid and so I'm gonna put solid right there. And again, nitrates are all soluble, so I'm gonna put AQ in front of my KNO3. Now the next thing we are gonna do is we can balance our reaction. There are two hydroxides on either side, so I'm gonna put a two there. This gets me two potassiums. I'm gonna put a two in front of KNO3. So right now, I have one cobalt on each side, two nitrates on each side, so now I am balanced. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna get a net ionic equation. So I want the thing that is removing ions from solution. You'll notice everything is ionic on my reactant side, and the only thing that is changing the amount of ions in solution is this formation of the solid. So the formation, of this solid is going to remove ions from solution. Now the way that solid was made, well, I can see that that was made out of the cobalt two plus ions, and that came from cobalt NO3 two, breaking up into cobalt two plus, plus two NO3 minus, and these are aqueous. And the other thing that is creating this is the two OH minus ions that are aqueous. And remember where this is coming from. So this is coming from the two potassium hydroxides that are aqueous, which really means I have two potassium ions 
plus two hydroxide ions. So this right here is my net ionic equation. So let's do the second reaction on this page. I have sodium chloride and I'm adding it to ammonium sulfate. So I'm gonna go ahead and look up my solubility rules. NaCl, I look at the chlorides and I see most are soluble and sodium is not an exception. So AQ. The other one that I had was ammonium sulfate. And you guys can see that the sulfates, most of them are soluble. There are exceptions, but ammonium is not one of them. So this gets an AQ. So aqueous and aqueous. So let's go ahead and do our yield arrow and our metathesis. So we're gonna have sodium, and this is gonna be a one plus ion, and it is going to combine with sulfate, which is a two minus ion. So I'm gonna need two sodiums per sulfate. The other product that I have is I have NH4, and so this is a polyatomic ion that's plus, and chloride, which is minus. So plus minus, they're gonna come together in a one-to-one -one ratio. So NH4Cl. So again, let's go ahead and look at our solubility rules. So we have sodium sulfate. So if I look at sulfate, most of them are soluble, and sodium is not an exception. So this is going to be aqueous. And the other product I had was NH4Cl. And again, if I look at the chloride, most chlorides are soluble, and NH4 plus is not an exception, so this is aqueous as well. So I'm gonna put AQ and AQ. Now what you guys will notice is that every single molecule on here is aqueous. Now, if everything is aqueous, that means I'm not removing ions from solution. And if everything is aqueous and I don't form a solid product or there's no solids to begin with, then nothing is happening. Everything is a spectator ion. So there is no reaction that takes place. So instead of writing a net ionic equation, I simply write no reaction. No metathesis takes place no ions are removed from solution. All right, gentle people, why don't you guys go ahead and do me a favor, go ahead and do this question for your quiz. All right, let's go ahead and do our metathesis reaction. So what you guys will see is that I'm gonna take my lithium, which is Li+, plus, and I'm gonna combine it with NO3-. minus. So plus one, minus one, they come together in a one-to-one -one ratio. Now we've done a ton of nitrates, and so remember, all nitrates are soluble, so I'm gonna put AQ. So let's look at the other ions in solution. We have OH minus, and that's gonna combine with H plus. So I'm gonna go ahead and put HOH. Now this might look funny to you guys. What you'll notice is that we don't normally write this as HOH. We have two hydrogens and an oxygen, so this is really liquid water. And so this is forming a non-electrolyte, and so this is gonna remove ions from solution. It's gonna take my OHs, and my H pluses, and combine them as water, and that water is not gonna break up. However, we're not after that, we're after things that don't react. So we know that OH minus and H plus, these are reacted away, so I can't have that as one of my choices. So the other thing that I formed was I had lithium nitrate. So remember what this really is? This is really lithium ions and nitrate ions. And you'll notice that that is what I started out with. And so in this case, these are my spectator ions. They are present before the reaction starts. They are present after the reaction starts. They are not involved in the reaction in any way. Well, I hope that makes sense. And remember to stay safe, Chem1A.